when collecting is all you can think about. Think Upper Deck EPAC, where you can buy, open, and trade hockey cards and authentic memorabilia from anywhere at any time. Real cards, real trades. Collect Upper Deck. All right, David, it's Upper Deck Player Spotlight time. Again, brought to you by our very good friends over at Upper Deck. Make sure you check them out. And for all our Upper Deck Player Spotlights, head on over to the fourthperiod.com. All right, let's get into it. We're spotlighting a couple players, but we're talking about their futures in mind here. So let's start in Chicago and Patrick Kane. Yeah, everybody wants to know what's going on with, with Patrick Kane. And yes, there were conversations in the offseason. Um, about that situation. The Blackhawks really did a good job locally, anyway, trying to kind of hush that and, and put that aside. There was nothing close, but there was a lot of due diligence that was done over parts of the offseason. I know that, you know, Kane had conversations because they were given permission, uh, along with his agent, Pat Brisson, to talk to some other teams and to kind of feel things out. I know those conversations took place, uh, but it didn't necessarily mean that anything was imminent. This is a guy that needs to do his homework and wants to do his homework. He's got a full no movement clause. They're going to reconvene once we get a few months into the season to really decide what he wants to do. Where does he want to potentially end up? He has that full move, as I mentioned, so he will dictate where he wants to go. But of the teams that have expressed interest in him, they're just sitting back waiting as well. So really it comes down to when Patrick Kane is ready to make that decision. The New York Rangers, the New York Islanders, the Dallas Stars, Columbus Blue Jackets, there are a ton of other teams, the Leafs, the Oilers, and so on, that would love to get their hands on Patrick Kane. It really is going to come down to where he will ultimately want to go. Is he going to go the Claude Giroux route and give him two teams? Or is he going to expand on that list? That's his right. He can do what he wants. So, you know, for now, we'll temper things, and we should, uh, because it's not going to get until we get kind of around the new year when he ultimately decides, you know, okay, I think I want to go in this direction. But... Has due diligence been done? Absolutely. Have the teams spoken to the Blackhawks, spoken to his agent, and in some cases spoken to Kane directly? Yep, that's happened. But things will really ramp up if he decides he wants to go later on in the season. Okay, I'm going to do a really good job on pumping the brakes on this as well. Very quickly, yes or no, will Patrick Kane be in a Chicago Blackhawks uniform when this season ends? No, I think he's going. Okay, let's move on to our next player playing in Boston. And you have to think this guy is going to be a Boston Bruins for, or Boston Bruin for a very long time. And that's David Pasternak. Well, if the Boston Bruins give him 11 million bucks a season or more, (laughs) then yes, he definitely will. Um, Yeah, this is, I mean, (laughs) David Pasternak is just an elite goal scorer. There's, There's no question about that. I think this kind of goes in the direction of what Nashville and Philip Forsberg did where they had conversations, they went back and forth throughout the season, they ramped things up in the offseason, and as we got closer to the start of free agency, that's when things picked up and he ultimately signed an eight-year deal. I think at the end of the day, that's how things play out with the Bruins and David Pasternakur, but, I mean, ultimately, we'll wait and see. He's focusing on hockey, he's letting his reps handle that negotiation. If talks pick up this week, beautiful. If they pick up in March, cool. He's going to stick around Boston until the end of the season, regardless of what happens or he gets his extension. So I think he's going to be a Bruin for a long time, um, but I think this has the making of really getting going later on. Unless all of a sudden a phone call happens, they say, all right, enough of this BS. Let's just lock him up now. Here's 11 point whatever. I don't know if they're there yet uh, by any stretch, um, but I think this is something that gets prolonged. I do think he stays in Boston long-term, but they got to pay up. Yeah, one of my favorite things when it comes to hockey and player negotiations is contract year and enter blank player's name because you know that they're going to have a big season and drive that price right up. David, thank you very much for this. As always, Upper Deck Player Spotlight here on the fourth period brought to you by Upper Deck. 